Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and welcome to Hale. I am so excited for this video. I've been planning this video for a while now. I even have my Alfred Hitchcock letterbox shirt on because letterbox is a big reason I'm able to do this video because they keep track of all the movies that I watch. So uh, shout out to letterbox. They are definitely not sponsoring this video, but hey, if you're interested, uh, hit me up. My business info is uh, blah, blah, blah. The way this is going to work is I have roughly 14 categories to talk about. The movies and TV shows and characters that will be nominated in this award show all come from a pool of first time watches for me in the year 2020. So you're not going to see anything from the year 2020 necessarily. It's going to be first time watches of the year 2020. So like for an example, I saw the movie Little Miss Sunshine for the first time in 2020 that's a movie that would qualify to be nominated. It can only be first time watch though. If it's something that I've seen before, it is not qualified because I'm specifically focusing on what movie slash TV shows I saw for the first time in this past year. And just a little clarification, all the movies that are nominated are things that I like, unless otherwise said so. And so if a movie doesn't win for its category, it doesn't mean that I dislike the movie. It just means that the one that won, I like more. There are four nominees for each category. I will give a brief description as to why each nominee was nominated for the category, and then I will announce the winner. Now, obviously, it's all my opinion. It's kind of like a fun way of showing you guys my stats for the year of 2020, but putting it in an award show format. And if you want to skip ahead to a different award, go ahead and use the timestamps below. You are more than welcome to do that if you want to only watch awards that you're interested in. Kicking off the award show, we have favorite character character of the year. The nominees are Sir Wilford Robarts from Witness for the Prosecution. I really liked the way that he didn't back down in the court case. I also liked his spunkiness. He would purposely hide cigars in his cane, although he knew that he wasn't allowed to be smoking. And plus he's really sassy too. And to see all of that in one character, especially a lawyer, was really entertaining to me. Frances Halliday, Frances Ha. Frances Halliday is such a joy. She's just a very careless person, but at the same time you can tell that she has her insecurities and it's fun to watch her throughout the movie deal with those insecurities, but also deal with a little bit of adventure in her life. Ed Bloom from Big Fish. Ed Bloom was interesting to watch because we get to see the young version of him and the old version of him, played both by Ewan McGregor and Albert Finney. He's so good at storytelling and it's so neat to see his life unfold and just the amazing life that he had. Amelie's main motive is to do good to others, to love others and to make other people's lives better. Of course I love Amelie. And the winner is Ed Bloom from Big Fish. I had to go with Ed Bloom because the combination of seeing his life as a younger man and an older man really hit me and it made me feel for the character that much more. The fact that so many characters in the film also love him really helped his case as well. And the next category is Favorite Villain of the Year. The nominees are Captain Bly from Mutiny on the Bounty. Captain Bly is as villainous as they get. He doesn't mind punishing his sailors whether they've done the slightest thing wrong or if they've done nothing wrong at all. He also is very active when it comes to revenge. He will not sleep without getting revenge. Bruno Antony. Strangers on a Train. Bruno Antony was so fun to watch this year, especially to see how psychotic his character is and that he really thinks that he can get away with murder in such an easy way and blackmail a character into doing the same thing. Anton Chigurh, No Country for Old Men. Anytime he's on screen is very scary because his character is very reserved, very quiet. He almost has his own laws and principles in, in his mind that he has made up and he follows them to a T and to think of someone like that existing is horrifying. Colonel Hans. Inglorious Bastards. Colonel Hans is <laughs> horrifying. If you guys have seen this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. He was just very intimidating. Every scene he is in, it's scary for the people that are in the scene and me watching it as the audience member is scared as well. And the winner is Captain Bly. There are other characters in this pool of nominations that may be more villainous, but Captain Bly to me is the perfect amount of villain where he doesn't go too over the top, but he also doesn't hold back. He definitely is villainous, he's mean, he's intimidating, and he's enjoyable to watch on screen. Next category is favorite TV character of the year. The nominees are Aang. While he's 12 years old, he is so enjoyable and so fun to watch. He just has so much spirit within him. And it's also cool to see the character development of him from season one, episode one, to the finale of the TV show. Uncle Iroh, Avatar The Last Airbender. Uncle Iroh is full of wisdom. He's someone that anytime he's on screen, he steals the screen. Even though it's an animated show, he steals the screen. I love any scene with Uncle Iroh in it. I love the advice he gives. I love his humor. I love how much he loves tea. Everything about Uncle Iroh is amazing. Abed. 
community. Abed is just so quirky. He's so smart. He quotes movies like that. He's one of the big reasons I got into community as fast as I did. I have to nominate him. And Jeff Winger, Community. Jeff is the sarcastic main character of Community. He is so funny. I love his attitude towards certain activities of the community college. And I love how dry his sense of humor is, how much he makes fun of the fact that he's a lawyer going to community college. Very enjoyable. Honestly, I could probably nominate like any character from Community and Avatar, but we'll just keep it at these four characters. But the winner goes to... Aang. As I said in his nomination, Aang is a fireball. It's cool to see his funny moments, but also his hard moments, his sad moments, the moments where he's really struggling as a character. And I was on board with Aang from the moment I started the show. And he's a reason that I continued watching the TV show. I love Aang. The next category is favorite first time animated film scene. The nominees are The Little Prince. The Little Prince reminded me that even as an adult, I can still have that childhood heart and have fun and adventures. And it, it really took me down a memory lane that I didn't realize existed. It just felt very nostalgic, although it was my first time seeing it. Grave of the Fireflies. This is one of the few movies in my life that has actually made me cry. And I'm not talking about just teary eyed. I'm talking about tears streaming down the face. This is a heavy movie, very mature subject matter and hard to watch as well. But I can't deny the fact that it is beautiful. Your Name. This was one I watched with friends and it was very enjoyable to watch with a group of people because we were consistently mind blown with the plot and the direction that this movie goes in. It's a great romance film and it made me appreciate the anime genre even more so. Wallace and Gromit, Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I watched this movie for my 24 hour movie marathon and it was just so enjoyable. It was very quirky. You can't help but appreciate the animation and all the effort that goes into stop motion as well. But the winner has to go to The Little Prince, with a close runner-up being Grave of the Fireflies. For me, The Little Prince beats Grave of the Fireflies just by a hair because while Grave of the Fireflies is an absolute masterpiece, it is a very hard watch and I don't see myself re-watching it anytime soon. Whereas with The Little Prince, I can see myself watching it again in the near future. Favorite first time foreign film. And the nominees are The Salesman. The Salesman was directed by Asghar Farhadi and it's a movie that goes in directions I wasn't expecting and it kept me glued to the screen the entire runtime even though it's a slower moving film. The chorus was very heartwarming, very moving, and very enjoyable to watch. Amongst all these nominees, it's definitely the most feel good film. Parasite. Parasite is an enjoyable watch every single time I revisit it. It is a blast to watch from beginning to end, and I feel like I notice something new every time I watch it as well. Solaris. While Solaris is long, it is a heavy movie that packs in a lot of details. It goes in many directions and introduces a lot of cool new ideas, and plus for the time it was made, it really impressed me. But the winner goes to Parasite. Parasite is not only the best foreign language film I saw for the first time this past year, but it is my favorite foreign language film of all time at the moment. I absolutely love Parasite, especially extra viewings, and each time I see it, I'm so satisfied by what happens, even though I know it's coming. That's a sign of a movie done well. The next category goes to favorite TV show episode of the year. The nominees are Sozin's Comment, the series finale to Avatar The Last Airbender. I won't explain what happens because obviously there will be spoilers, but let me just say it is a very satisfying finale. The Jedi, Mandalorian Season 2. This was such an enjoyable episode. I love seeing Ahsoka, even though I'm not even that deep into Clone Wars, I already really appreciate her as a character. I also love learning so much more about Baby Yoda. I mean, for one, we found out what his name was in this episode, and I feel like we really progressed in the plot in this episode. Remedial Chaos Theory is my favorite episode of Community. The plot is fairly simple. The gang gets together to have a pizza night and a game night. When the doorbell rings for the pizza man, they show what would have happened in each situation depending on which of the gang members picked up the pizza. And so for example, when Troy gets the pizza, a different outcome comes to pass. When Britta gets the pizza, there's a different outcome and it shows you all these different timelines and it builds for one of the most quotable episodes of the show. The Rescue, The Mandalorian Season 2. This episode packed plenty of surprises. Seeing a familiar Jedi on screen again was so enjoyable. I will say though that it wasn't as enjoyable because several YouTubers spoiled it for me in their thumbnails. So PSA, please don't do that in the future. If you're going to spoil it, spoil it in the video, not in your thumbnail. Because of that, The Rescue didn't stand as high as it could have but I still really enjoyed this episode. But the winner goes to Sozin's Comment, the series finale of Avatar The Last Airbender. 
Again, I don't want to spoil this episode, and so I'm just going to leave it at that, but just know that it is an amazing finale to the TV show. Best TV show of 2020. And the nominees are Bly Manor. Bly Manor is a follow-up series to Haunting of Hill House, and while it wasn't as good as Haunting of Hill House, it did still have its signature moments, and the child performances are amazing. I also loved the performance by Victoria Pedretti. The Mandalorian Season 2. In my opinion, The Mandalorian Season 2 was much better than Season 1. While season one gave us some good episodes, there were a lot of filler episodes. I feel like season two, while it may have still had a filler episode here and there, every episode moved the story along and it was very enjoyable. There wasn't one episode that ended and I thought, I just didn't like that episode. Whereas with season one, I did think that several times. Plus, there were two or three episodes that blew my mind this season. Mandalorian season two was very enjoyable. Community. The first three seasons especially were absolutely hilarious. The situations these characters get themselves into are sometimes unbelievable, but you can't help but just watch and laugh your beep off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the biggest weakness with Community, though, is that it does get worse as the show progresses. However, for as good as the first three seasons are, it still deserves a nomination this year. And Avatar, The Last Airbender. Avatar, The Last Airbender was a show that I knew existed. I saw stray episodes as a child, but I had never seen the show all the way through. So when it was released on Netflix, I had to jump on the bandwagon. I had to watch it, and I was thoroughly impressed and just amazed by how good this show actually is. And the winner goes to... Avatar, The Last Airbender. I remember a few years back, I was looking at the IMDb's top rated TV shows list and I saw Avatar, The Last Airbender in the top 15 TV shows of all time. I had heard from friends that it was a good show, but I didn't realize it was that good of a show. And to finally watch it, I can agree that it is one of the best TV shows I have ever seen and it definitely deserves a spot for my favorite TV show watched this year. I made a separate video talking about why I love Avatar The Last Airbender, so if you wanna hear more of my thoughts, definitely check out that video. Okay, let's talk about actors. The nominees for my favorite performance by an actress are Kate Hudson in Almost Famous. I haven't seen Kate Hudson in a lot, but she was nominated for an Oscar for this film and it was very deserved. She plays a character that is very conflicted and has hard times, but also loves others and is just a very social person. It's cool seeing her on screen. Aubrey Plaza, Ingrid Goes West. I don't know if Aubrey Plaza was acting in this film or what, but whatever she was doing, she did great at it. And the reason I say that is because Aubrey Plaza is just kind of a crazy person in real life. In Ingrid Goes West, she plays a stalker who is obsessed with a certain Instagram influencer. It's actually Elizabeth Olsen, so it's cool to see them work together. I just thought her performance was really funny. And while this film is a comedy, there were definitely several scenes where Aubrey Plaza gave an amazing performance in the more serious scenes of the film. And Maria Falconetti, The Passion of Joan of Arc. Her performance is absolutely mesmerizing. When I saw this film, she was what stuck with me after viewing it. And the winner for Best Actress Performance of the Year goes to Maria Falconetti, Passion of Joan of Arc. Her performance is so scary, it's so sad. The camera angles that are so close to her face and seeing her cry is just very heartbreaking. The movie is very sad and I think her performance is a big reason as to why the film has gone down in history the way it has and why so many people consider it to be such a sad film. And the next category, my favorite performance by an actor. The nominees are Javier Bardem, No Country for Old Men. Charles Lawton, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This was the first film I saw Charles Lawton in, and he moved me so much in his performance as Quasimodo. Yes, while he is covered in makeup and while he doesn't speak very much, I felt for this character, and the moments that he does speak took my heart away. I felt so bad for Quasimodo in this film, as anyone should when they're watching Hunchback in Notre Dame, but Charles Lawton's performance solidified it even more so as not only an amazing performance, but an amazing movie. Rod Steiger, The Pawnbroker. This film was directed by Sidney Lumet, and Rod Steiger plays a pawnbroker who is a survivor from the Holocaust, and with that, you can imagine, there's a pretty emotional performance. Sidney Poitier, In the Heat of the Night. I had never seen a Sidney Poitier film before, and seeing him in this caught my eye. I want to see more of him. I am so excited to see the rest of his career, but I really was impressed with the way he played Mr. Tibbs in In the Heat of the Night. I love the way he spoke to the white people in this movie, how he didn't take their crap. He spoke to them like he would anyone else. He gave a very confident performance, and especially for the time frame that this movie was released, I commend him highly. And the winner goes to 
Rod Steiger, the pawnbroker. Rod Steiger's performance is heartbreaking in this film. He plays a pretty grumpy older gentleman that owns a pawn shop and he doesn't like being around people, but throughout the film he has a lot of flashbacks of the Holocaust and of his family being taken away from him and him going to the camps and it's a very sad movie to watch. There's this particular scene at the end though where he just breaks down crying and that's the scene that made me choose him as my favorite performance from an actor of the year. Seeing him cry broke my heart. It made the movie that much more sad. If the movie wasn't sad enough, it made it even more sad in that moment and I loved watching him on the screen. These are the kind of performances that stick with me. Clearly his did. His is my favorite performance from an actor. The next two categories are pretty exciting. I don't necessarily focus on a performance, but I focus on an actor and an actress. Just my favorite actor of the year and my favorite actress of the year. The way I decided this was I looked at how many movies I watched from each actor and each actress from the previous year. I also took into account the enjoyability of watching them on screen. The nominees for my favorite actress of the year go to Helena Bonham Carter. I saw four movies of hers this year for the first time Grand total of seven movies if I include rewatches. Helena Bonham Carter is someone that I've always appreciated as an actress. I think she's actually pretty underrated. She's not talked about a lot, but I really like her when she's on screen and I feel like she can take really any kind of role. Marlena Dietrich. I saw Marlena Dietrich in Witness for the Prosecution and Destry Rise Again, and in both films, she impressed me. While I didn't see a lot of movies with her, she was an actress that I had no idea existed before this year, and now she is someone on my radar, and when I see movies starring her, I want to watch them. Ingrid Bergman. The two movies that I saw for the first time with Ingrid Bergman were Spellbound and The Bells of St. Mary's. In both films, they piqued my interest with Ingrid Bergman's filmography, and I actually have plans to watch more of her in 2021. Julie Delpy. Julie Delpy is the star of the Before Trilogy, and her performance really impressed me. I loved her character, and I loved the performance that she gave in those movies. While I didn't see any other movies with her in it, the three movies I did see were enough. But the winner goes to Helena Bonham Carter. Like I said, she's an underrated actress, and I don't think she gets the recognition that she deserves. Every performance I saw her in this year was different from the other and it was just enjoyable to fill my year with her. And the nominations for my favorite actor of the year are Jack Lemmon. I saw five movies of him, three of which were first time watches. Jack Lemmon is really good in his comedic roles. I think that sometimes he tends to overact in his younger roles specifically but I still enjoy him for the most part. It's fun watching him on screen. Johnny Depp is no stranger. You guys all know who Johnny Depp is. I saw many movies with him in it this year because I marathon Tim Burton's filmography and Johnny Depp and Tim Burton have collabed so many times. While there were several rewatches, there were also several movies I saw for the first time and in each movie, I thought he gave a great performance particularly in Ed Wood. Really liked his performance in that one. Charles Lawton is an actor I found out about this past year as I was studying Alfred Hitchcock's filmography. I've yet to see any of his movies with Alfred Hitchcock, but in the meantime, I have seen five of his other films that he starred in, and not one film has disappointed me yet. In the time that he performed, not a lot of people thought that he was very appealing to the eye. He's an overweight actor, and because of that, he had a lot of insecurities, but I have fallen in love with Charles Lawton. I love seeing his performances, and I don't care what he looks like. He steals the screen anytime he's on it. And Walter Matthau. Like Jack Lemmon, I saw a lot of Walter Matthau films, and honestly, with both actors, it was kind of unintentional. It just happened to be that I'd be watching a movie, and it's like, oh, look, it's Walter Matthau again, or hey, look, it's uh, that Jack Lemmon guy again. But either way, I saw five movies with him this year, and I enjoyed all of them. None of them were bad. Some were better than others. Some made me laugh. Others didn't make me laugh as hard, but he's an enjoyable actor. He seems like a very serious person to me, but it makes me even more impressed that he's able to act in some of the roles that I saw him in. But the winner definitely goes to Charles Lawton. To me, this isn't really much of a competition. While I liked the other actors I saw, Charles Lawton just blew my mind. And not only did I appreciate seeing the five films I saw him in this past year, but I'm so excited to see more movies from him. Now we've talked about actors and my favorite performances from them, my favorites of the year, but now let's talk about behind the scenes, the directors. The nominations for my favorite director of 2020 are Alfred Hitchcock. At this point, I'm a broken record. I've said this so many times in my videos, but I saw 15 movies for the first time from Alfred Hitchcock. In grand total, if I include rewatches, I believe I saw 21 films from him this past year. So I went a little crazy with Alfred Hitchcock this year, but it's because I love him as a director and it's been so fun getting to know his filmography more. Tim Burton. In the month of October, I devoted a whole entire video to ranking all of Tim Burton's movies 
With that came watching a lot of his movies for the first time and re-watching them to get an updated opinion on them. Tim Burton is a very quirky director. I enjoy his movies for the most part. His humor doesn't always hit with me and also some of the directions he takes his movie doesn't always hit, but the movies that I do like from him are amazing. Billy Wilder. I spontaneously became obsessed with Billy Wilder back in November of 2020 and I haven't stopped watching him since. In fact, since starting this spontaneous watch-a-thon of Billy Wilder, I've seen nine of his films, seven of them first-time watches. Billy Wilder has really impressed me with his direction but also his scripts. Man, can this guy write. And John Hughes. John Hughes kicked off my low-key series I have on the channel where I rank director's filmographies. I realized that he had only directed around eight or nine movies and so I thought, what the heck? Let's check out his whole filmography. So I did exactly that. And while John Hughes has some movies that are pretty ridiculous, he also has some iconic movies such as Breakfast Club, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Uncle Buck. He's an iconic director and arguably even more so an iconic writer. But the winner has to go to... Alfred Hitchcock. While I enjoyed all these directors, Alfred Hitchcock is my favorite of all time and it was such a blast watching a lot of his movies for the first time this last year. I also have a goal to see all of his movies one day. I am more than halfway there and so knowing that I got even closer to fulfilling that bucket list item made me so happy. Plus I got to know Alfred Hitchcock more as a director. I purchased at least four books this last year that have to do with Alfred Hitchcock. I also reviewed two of his movies on my channel in my 11 out of 10 series. But 2020 wasn't the only year for Alfred Hitchcock. You should expect to see plenty more of him in the future. Check, 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 check. And before I talk about my favorite movie of the year, I must talk about my least favorite movie of the year. While there were many good movies I saw for the first time, there were also plenty of bad movies I saw for the first time. The nominations for the worst first time watch of the year are Scrooged, while many consider this a Christmas classic, I saw it for the first time and I think that that really hurt it for me. There was no nostalgia going into it and I thought that all the humor was very slapstick, very dumb. There wasn't really a moment that I laughed. If I were to give this movie any credit, it would probably just be for the creative storyline that instead of giving us the traditional Christmas Carol story, they kind of twist it a little bit. I appreciated that, but really nothing else in this film. The Room. The Room is infamously the best worst movie of all time. And so while it was an awful movie, I'd have to pay it a little bit of recognition because it was a blast to watch and I laughed really hard in several scenes. AI Artificial Intelligence. It might be shocking to some of you to see a film directed by Steven Spielberg in this pool of nominations, but I was very disappointed by this film. I watched it with one of my buddies in college and throughout the whole movie, we just kept asking ourselves, what the heck is this movie? Where is it going? And what is happening right now? Why is there a teddy bear following him? Why is he looking for a fairy? Who's the monkey? Ah, I just, it did not work for me. I know that this movie has its fan base and people like this film, but for me, no, didn't like it. And Dark Shadows. While Tim Burton has made some good movies, he's also made some awful movies and Dark Shadows was one of them. I can't really think of anything I liked about this movie. Like, no, can't think of anything. It was a chore to get through. And the winner goes to Dark Shadows. I possibly hated Dark Shadows more than any other of these films because I had COVID while I watched it. And so it was probably watching a bad movie on top of feeling super sick. Not a good combination. I don't recommend doing that. And maybe that's a little unfair to Dark Shadows, but regardless, even if I watched it feeling great and healthy, I still don't think I would have loved it any. I can't think of one thing I liked about this film. It was just really dumb not funny, and I kept watching the duration, hoping that it would end soon. But there's not only worst first time watches and best first time watches, there's also the weirdest first time watch. And the nominations for the weirdest first time watch of the year for me are The Lobster. I don't even know if I could explain this plot to you. It is so bizarre, very strange. I didn't enjoy this movie very much. A lot of people really enjoyed The Lobster, but it wasn't for me. I didn't like the dark sense of humor. I didn't really like the direction it went in. And kind of like other movies I've mentioned in this awards show, I kept looking at the runtime. I was kind of excited for it to end. It just wasn't my kind of movie. The Wiz. The reason I watched this film is because I'm trying to watch more of Cindy Lumet's filmography. I saw that it was on TV, so I recorded it, and man, was this movie weird. It's The Wizard of Oz with an all African-American cast, and that's not where the movie goes wrong. In fact, I think that's a pretty clever twist of the story. It's just the singing and the dancing and the makeup, the characters, everything is so 
bizarre and kind of scary too. Weird Science. I only nominated this movie because it has weird in the title. I'm just kidding. But for real, this movie is super weird. Have you watched it recently? There's a scene in the middle of the film where they're having a party with a bunch of friends and these like zombie bikers come out of nowhere and attack the children and I'm like, what am I watching? And also the plot in general is just super weird. It was so bizarre and this was actually my least favorite film that I watched of John Hughes's filmography. And Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive wasn't bad by any means. It was just super weird and I still have questions about it. There are so many things that happened in this movie that made me question it. In 2019, my weirdest first time watch of the year was Eraserhead directed by David Lynch. And so it's no surprise that Mulholland Drive is nominated for the weirdest first time watch of this year. And the winner goes to the Wiz. While I watched so many weird movies this year, The Wiz was insane. When The Wiz ended, I went on Letterboxd immediately and put it as the first place for the weirdest film I saw of the year because it is just such a bizarre movie. I don't know if any of you grew up with this movie. I know I have some friends who it's very nostalgic for, but for a first time watch, having never seen it or never even really hearing of it before, man, was this movie strange. If you want to see Sidney Lumet's complete filmography, I guess you'll have to watch it eventually, but just be prepared. It's a weird movie. And the moment that you guys have all been waiting for, my favorite first time watch of the year. Now, if you watch my top 10 first time watches and my top 10 first time Criterion watches, you're probably wondering, uh, Nathan, what's the big reveal here? We already know what your favorite movies of the year were. These nominations will consist of my top two from both of those videos. So with that being said, the nominations are Failsafe, directed by Sidney Lumet, Witness for the Prosecution, directed by Billy Wilder, Parasite, directed by Bong Joon-ho, and Big Fish, directed by Tim Burton. If you want to hear my thoughts on each film, definitely make sure to check out those separate videos where I give you my thoughts on them. This is the equivalent to the best picture. The winner for my favorite first time watch of 2020 goes to Parasite. I don't know what more I can say about Parasite because I have talked about it so much on this channel. Whether it was talking about my favorite movies from 2019 or my favorite first time watches from the Criterion Collection or talking about movie recommendations or talking about foreign language films, whatever it was I was talking about, I feel like I have just, I have talked your ear off on this film. And so I don't know what more to say about Parasite and I don't know that I need to say anymore because you guys know about this movie. If you've seen it, you've seen it. If you haven't seen it, why haven't you seen? It is one of my favorite movies of all time. It's a movie that I not only saw one time this year, I saw three times this year. And so it definitely deserves the winning spot for favorite first time watch. Now, the way I decide my favorite first time watch is not based on how many times I saw the film. It's based on how much I enjoyed it. But the fact that I saw Parasite three times definitely helps its case. Thank you so much for joining me for my first award show. I hope to do this next year as well. It was definitely fun to prepare for, fun to film. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are in the comments on my first time watches. And if you would like, put your own awards in the comments below. I'd love to see what you nominate for your own categories and what wins in each category. I appreciate your time, guys. Hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later.